I would like to become a pediatric physical therapist so I can help kids. I want to apply to UCLA and major in psychology. I want to be an entrepreneur and start my own clothing brand. I'm hoping to go to four-year college and major in architecture. I want to be an animator. I want to practice law. I want to help either in civil law or immigration law because those are the things that I see that are needed in my community to like move forward. It is completely true that all students have the ability to succeed. And the only reason students are not succeeding is because they are not close enough to the opportunities that will allow them to succeed. Education was not built for everyone. And that's the problem. And until we really start, we start looking at that reasons behind it and look at all the isms that play into the classroom, we truly can't do what we need to do um, for all children. Oftentimes, the adults and the system around us are blaming the kids for their failures. What our work is about is looking at the system around the student that is producing these outcomes. Students that go through different things such as homelessness, you know, foster care, even people who migrate to this country or like move states need some more support to just go through the education system because they have to deal with like coping with what happened to them or is happening to them. Newcomers and English language learners, I feel like they don't get um, enough support. What I think of what stood in the way of my success is the student to teacher ratio. I wouldn't say I didn't learn anything, but if I needed one-on-one -on -one help, I didn't always get it. As you can see, I'm a black woman, and obviously like the system was not constructed for like people of color to succeed. So every day I felt like I had to struggle extra hard to succeed in my classes. We really have an opportunity to do better and to see students from a really asset-based lens. And it's really on us as adults and on the system to change the policies and practices and procedures that we are implementing that further perpetuate structural racism and the gaps that we see. Some students come to us needing more. There are deficits of learning by the time they get to us because of that structural racism. They don't have the supports uh, their needs are being met by their communities. And so we have to overcome all of that and catch them up and advance them. Educational equity, ultimately it's when every child has the opportunity to succeed in education, regardless of race, regardless of zip code, regardless of color, regardless of ethnicity, where every child has an opportunity to succeed. So how can we do everything that we can to meet the child where they are. That's what equity is. And so we have to be willing in our system to give more to those who need more when they need it. Students, parents, and families are in classrooms every day. So who better to determine what solutions are than the folks who are closest to what's actually happening every day? We should always listen to students. <laughs> and we should always ask students what is happening for them and what are their ideas and what are their needs. It can start by focusing on a small group of students who are experiencing success. And we can do this by listening to their stories, understanding the communities they're from, asking their feedback. I mean, if we do this and we identify their needs, it'll actually build the capacity of the system to impact the whole. We need more resources in school specifically that serves black and brown students because these students have to work extra hard and do like double the work just to succeed. For me, having a trusted adult at the school is very helpful because then you always have someone to talk to here. I think it would be helpful if the teachers got to know me more and like interact with the students. If you look at the kids that have stuff going on at home and stuff and you put in the, the work to help them, then it can really change their lives. I stress myself out, so I feel like there should be therapists at each school because it can really help kids. Especially first-generation college students need more support on what to expect in their future college experience and, and how to navigate through all that. It's the ways our systems are set up, like it's very segregated by like neighborhood and race, class, ability. And if we make policies to like integrate schools, not just like physically, but economically, then it will just better the education system for everyone. What we're seeing more and more today is that belonging and equity are connected. 
You cannot produce a curriculum, a policy, a treatment of people in a disparaging way if you feel like they belong. You just can't do it. We have to move people to see that other children making it means their child is making it. And if somebody's child is not making it, it means their child is not making it. That's a hard turn for people to make, but that's what's required for people to see that equity is in all of their interest. We need to actually put our money where our mouth is and resource and invest in education so that we can achieve the outcomes that equity envisions. I know we will be successful. It's not gonna to come tomorrow, unfortunately, and it will be a battle, but we will eventually get what's needed in order to truly educate all of our children regardless of where they live.